I'm back today with another design team project for Dies R Us. This time I'm making a reveal wheel card using some stamps and dies from Lawn Fawn. Hello and welcome to Debbie J's Crafting Corner. I'm Debbie and each week I show you how you can create awesome cards and other crafty projects. Because if I can make it, you can too. So if you'd like to see more tutorials and inspirational videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. Hi guys, I have a few different stamp and die sets from Lawn Fawn that I'll be using for today's card. I'm going to be making a reveal wheel card using the Just My Type and Love Poem stamp and die sets. So I'm going to start off by stamping out all of the little um, pieces that I want to have on the front of my card and I'll get those colored up using my new Parku markers. For my coloring today, I'm going to be using the Parku markers. You probably saw my unboxing not too long ago, and so far I am seeing a difference between this and my Spectrum Noirs, but so far it seems like there is a purpose for both of those. These, these are more saturated, and I think they would work better for more highly detailed work compared to my Spectrum Noir markers. My Spectrum Noir markers tend to put out a lot of ink, and it spreads fast, and it seems to blend a lot easier. But I think it, what the big difference is, is, I think these probably have less alcohol actually in the marker, and that's why the Spectrum markers blend so well, but why these do very good detail work. So um, you'll be able to see the different colors by the caps, cap marks. I also have a little swatch that I did previously, and I'll be referring to this when choosing my colors. But to be honest, I am just winging it, so I don't really know what colors I'm going to use for what, and, but it's going to turn out cute in the end. Now, one thing I have noticed is that that little tiny line there that was between the space bar and the lower um, keys on the keyboard of this typewriter, I would not have been able to actually color that well <laughs> with my Spectrum Noir markers because I wouldn't have been able to get that fine of a line. So this, uh, these, this set actually works really well for this purpose. I do have to do a bit more layering to get the blends that I want, um, but I think that is also teaching me a little more about how to do those layerings where I've never really needed to and that's, I, that's one reason why I really don't do much with colored pencils is I haven't figured out haven't practiced enough rather to figure out how to get that perfect layering and how to get that perfect blend from layering the colors. So that's just another another one of those projects I need to work on. And these markers though are definitely teaching me the value of layering because I also love the fact that I can get these detailed lines.
Now that everything's colored, we need to cut all of the different pieces out, and I'm using the coordinating die set for each of these little images. Oh my goodness, this guy is so stinking cute! And then we have our other little mouse that we can see from behind. And it didn't line up the, the die quite right, but that's okay, I think. So next I'll go ahead and cut out all the rest of the pieces that we need to assemble our reveal wheel. Next I'll go ahead and start assembling our little scene. I'm using art glitter glue to adhere everything down. I decided that I didn't really like the way that the paper is fitting on that typewriter, so I'm going to cut a little slit in the top of that typewriter using another one of the dies for that purpose that's included in the die set. At this point, my magic mat was starting to look a little bit warped, so I am going ahead and unwarping that by just hitting it with my Ranger Heat It tool for a little bit, and then I'm going to run it through my die machine with no dies, and that while it's warm, and that tends to flatten it out really nicely. So our scene is all put together. All I need to do now is create the actual wheel. So I'm using the reveal wheel of two different circle dies. One is a larger, one is a smaller, and that creates the mechanism for doing our reveal wheel. Next, I'm going to stamp the little messages that are gonna go on the reveal wheel. Now, I don't have the square um, reveal wheel stencil or template, but I do have the one that's for round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line that up and just take my pencil again and I'm going to put a little mark, real light, at the base that's closest to the center on all three of the wheels and then the opposing one that's closest to the outside edge. That's going to give me an idea of where I need to stamp. Now it's not going to be the right shape, but it's going to give me the right placement of where those windows are going to need to be. 
So let me go ahead and just turn this so that we have the first section to the top. And then I've got, this one says, I could have texted. So I'll go ahead and just line that up, basically having so the top of the stamp is somewhat flat across the, the top there. Now what I learned the first time doing these, because, because I did a sample of this one, is make sure that you put your sentiments in the right order. First time I stamped it, I stamped it the wrong way. So we've got, I could have texted, and when you're doing the card, they're going to be turning it this way, so turn your card this way. Line up the next spot with that mark to the top. And then the next sentiment we have is, but I made you this card. And then again, we're going to turn the card, turn that little wheel, so that the next mark is to the top. And then my final sentiment that I'm using is sending hugs. So I'm gonna try to just center that and line it up kinda straight with that top mark. And now the little reveal wheel portion is done. Okay, next we're going to start assembling the rest of the card. Now I need another panel that basically mirrors the um, reveal wheel panel that we just did. And so I'm going to cut another one of those out of white cardstock. This is going to give me something to basically to back everything and have my foam tape, my foam squares and all of that on. And the reason that I cut out this piece was mostly just I wanted a backing piece for my main card panel and I want because I want this to be more sturdy. Um, you know me, I like my cards to be sturdy and this is some lightweight cardstock that I'm using today. But I found that sometimes on my interactive cards, because I'm using the lighter weight cardstock, because you don't really want too much bulk, sometimes different pieces just aren't quite as sturdy as what I'd like. So we've got this little reveal wheel with our sentiments. And then I'm gonna need a brad. Now I had trouble finding my little brad, so I found this in some of my older stash. They are little shaped ones. It doesn't matter what shape they are, but you do need the mini brads. Now I'll show you what I mean. This one is tiny, but these are way too big <coughs> because we've got this little tiny hole there. So you put your brad through one side. And this is the front side, the part that's stamped. And then that little extra circle we did, we're going to put that on as well. And just open up the prongs on your brad. Now the reason that this works is because we're going to have that little circle attached to the back panel and that's going to leave the front circle to be able to move. Now I want to make sure that I get this lined upright and I don't want to take a chance of damaging that so that's another reason I have this. So I'm going to position one of my little sentiments in that, in that square we've got. And I'm going to basically just hold it and make sure that everything shows up in the window the way I want it. So while it's in place, I'm going to take one of those pieces of washi tape that I was using earlier and tape it to this panel so it does not move. I don't want it to go out of place. And now I'm just going to take a couple little foam squares and put it to the back of that little circle. Okay, so now that is ready to go on to this other panel that we just cut. So I'll go ahead and take off the release paper. And then just line that up. And since they are identical, you shouldn't have any problem getting that lined up. And just press that down. Now when I remove that washi tape, We've got our mechanism in place. And we, when we put these, line these up together, we can do a little quick test run. And that works perfect. That's gonna be so cute. 
Okay, since that piece is all done, I'm going to go ahead and adhere these together. And that'll give us that extra strength on the front of the card. And I'm making sure to get the edges pretty well. Okay, so next we need to add some foam tape or foam squares to the back of to the space in between the two panels because we don't want it's there's just not enough room we, otherwise it gets squished because of the bread so first we're going to and we also need to make sure that it does not interfere with the wheel turning so I am going to place some first in the corners well, actually I'm going to put one right here and here that's going to be close to that notch to be able to turn it and I'll put one up here in this corner and I typically like to put tape foam tape across the entire back of my card because I want everything to be I don't want it to be able to be squished too badly so I'm gonna kind of do that meaning it's a little bit of overkill on with the foam squares this time but again I'm not getting close to that wheel because I do not want there to be any kind of problem with being able to turn it Okay, now I'm going to line up the card and I like resting it on my desk to make sure that I get the bottom lined up well. Okay, so that looks so cute. Ah, except I did not put the little mouse on there yet. I did decide to go ahead and go back and color a new one because the offset was just... it. The die cutting I just was bothering me too much. <coughs> so let's go ahead and glue this little guy down. is just adorable okay <laughs> okay and next we're going to be putting it on the front of a card base but there is one other thing I need to add on here before I adhere this down and that is this little stamp that says turn me and this just says turn me so it lets the person know what they're supposed to do when they get the card Put that close to the edge. There we go. And now that I think about it, I probably should have adhered this before adhering the front panel down because it's going to be a little difficult to press down and get enough um, <coughs> enough coverage on this because that little. Um, because of all those little pieces of foam tape. What's the cards in place? So that looks pretty good. Decided I wanted to put an additional piece on the inside of the card. So I've cut another panel down to, uh, <coughs> 
five by three and three quarters and I'm gonna go ahead and put this little typewriter in there this one has a piece of paper sticking out so I'm gonna go ahead and just put that down here in the corner and then I've got another stamp that is some X's and O's that I think would be really cute in the shape of a heart I'll put that right in the middle of the paper does look like I missed a little bit um, on the typewriter so I'm just going to draw that line in with a black pen and I'll just adhere that to the inside of my card using my dot liner adhesive. you know me I have to add a little bit more so as the finish final finishing touch I'm gonna add some of these cute little hearts that I use so often this is these are glitter shapes that I picked up from Target I believe it was a year and a half ago and I'm just gonna add a few little hearts that finishes this Dyes R Us design team project for today. Some of the products that I use can be found at the Dyes R Us website and I've left links to these in the description below. Here are some other videos that I know you'll enjoy. Thanks you so much for dropping by and remember, if I can make it, you can too. See you next time.